people are anxious. There's, there's a frustration. There's an anxiety on the inside. People are anxious. For what? To improve themselves. So what happens? We just keep going around the same mountain. We therefore remain down. We just have the same experience, the same problems we had 10 years ago, we're still having today. But not after today. Not after this session, right? We are all gonna take action. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. We're gonna take action and we are gonna work on ourselves to take responsibility for our own leadership. Can we do that? My dream is to help you with yours. And I do that by assessing and training and equipping and developing your teams so you don't have to. Welcome to the training today. I want to commend you for taking action in your pursuit of reaching your full potential. I had this thought come to mind just moments ago and I want to share it with you. I believe it's powerful. It's simply this. If you clarify nothing, you will complicate everything. If you fail to clarify your purpose, then everything else in life will be complicated. We're talking about the power of a pre-made decision today. We're talking about you reaching your full potential. It's really amazing to me how many people believe that reaching their full potential will just happen if they, if they simply show up to life each day. And, and, and you know, while that's uh, commendable <laughs> to, to show up and, and, and clock into life each morning, that's not the final step. That's just the start. We must be intentional about our growth because it, it simply does not happen automatically. And I learned this personal growth lesson many years ago, uh, really from an unusual source, my boss on a construction site. And I wanted to start off today sharing it with you. I was 20 years old and you know how it is. I knew everything. Um, Crazy Dave was 50 years old and he knew nothing. Um, <laughs> we, we were on a job site in a local elementary school in the summer of 2003 and I had been a plumber's apprentice for a year and I already obviously knew everything there was to know about plumbing. And on this day, Crazy Dave, who received his nickname for, uh, well, let's just say he was a little bit passionate about, uh, about his job and about what he did. Um, he asked me to look for a certain fitting in our job box. Now, a fitting in this case was, it was a small piece of uh, copper tubing that we needed to run a water line, okay? Without getting too specific. But uh, he, was, he was unsure if we had the fitting, but he wanted me to look in our job box. Anyways, this big uh, three foot deep box, four feet wide, uh, and, and uh, go through there and, and, and pull out all our stuff and, and look through it. And so uh, Dave could probably see that I was not very enthusiastic about looking through a large metal box filled with heavy tools, uh, tool bags, hardware, and all kinds of other junk for a 15 cent piece of metal that we could just go uh, and get from the store really quick. But uh, I walked down the long silent hallway of the elementary school to the room where we were keeping all our supplies and I opened the box and nonchalantly kind of, you know, pushed aside some nuts and bolts and, and, uh, casually, uh, pushed aside some heavy boxes and bags and peeked around them to see if, uh, I could see a glimmer of copper in the bottom of the box. And I couldn't see anything. Obviously I wasn't planning on seeing anything. I fully intended on reporting to Dave that we should just call our boss and tell him to bring us, uh, bring us the part we needed from the store, right? That's the easiest way. So I shut the box and made my way back to Dave and I reported to him that we did not have the part and we need to call the boss and, and, you know, have him bring us one. Crazy Dave looked at me and with fire in his eyes, he began to march his five foot tall stocky frame down this long hallway and he motioned to me with one wave of the arm, follow me, right? And I followed behind him like a toddler that was in trouble with his parents. Uh, we, got, we got down to the room and I received a, a front row seat to why Crazy Dave received his nickname because Dave threw open the lid of our large metal box and he reached in there and began to throw 40 and 50 pound bags of tools, heavy duty power tools. And, 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 and I felt like I was in a cartoon where the character is throwing everything out of this toy chest into the air behind him. It seemed like he just kept pulling uh, stuff out of the box, pushing aside nuts and bolts, screws flying everywhere. Uh, and I just stood back holding my breath, hoping, just praying that, that 
that he would not find that copper fitting, right? That I confidently declared was not in the box. And once all the throwing was done, Dave reached down into the box. Oh, you know it. And pulled out the small piece of copper tubing that I was supposed to find. He held it up to my face and just underneath my nose. And and he said to me seven words that I'll never forget. He said, you've got to have a want to. And I'll repeat those words to you today, because whether you're trying to start a business, incre- increase your skill set, or, or transform a community, you've got to have a want to. Whether you're leading your family, leading a company, or leading yourself, you've got to have a want to. You, you must have a desire that transcends what someone else suggested to you or assigned to you. And I implore you today to identify, define, And write down your want to. Because what you are searching for may be right underneath your nose. You got to have a want to. I love that story. I love love that thought. And I hope that challenges you today to define your want to before your head hits the pillow tonight. Identify. Define. Define. Write down your want to, your desire. Well, today I've got, I've got some teaching in store for you. I'm going to share uh, the five pillars of success um, that I've discovered. I, uh, I've uh, studied many successful people, um, from Benjamin Franklin to Jeff Bezos. I've, I've seen these pillars evident in my own life and the lives of people that I get to spend time with that are extremely successful, like my personal mentor, Tony Ford, a wildly successful entrepreneur in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, all the way to John Maxwell, who has written over 100 books and at this current time has invites from over 23 presidents of countries to bring in his team members, uh, like myself, to train government officials and citizens and leadership. Um, or even Paul Martinelli, another mentor of mine who sold over $100 million in training uh, and personal growth materials. All these successful people have five pillars that support the successful life they've built. I'm going to share those with you today before we go. Now, I don't have it at my command today the time to go over all of the five pillars and walk you through the process that my private uh, coaching clients receive, but I will share with you how you can receive or how you can have access to all of those. Uh, is that fair? Uh, I'm going to assume you said yes, so so great. Fantastic. Well, there's so much to discuss today, and, I, and I'm going to uh, keep it to under an hour for you. So as I was working on this teaching over the weekend, I had this, this deep sense of, of purpose and, and of almost a spiritual experience. And I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but there are moments where you know you are doing exactly what you should do be doing and you are fulfilling your purpose at a very high degree and it's in those moments that that normal success definitions simply do not compare so I'm so happy that you made the decision to listen to this teaching today I love the title the power of a pre-made decision the power of a pre-made decision I actually did not come up with that title a friend of mine uh, shared with me that his pastor had a message that really impacted his life uh, I never heard the message, but the title alone was was riveting to me. And if you're a thinker, which I hope you are, you could think on this for hours and the implications of it, the power of a pre-made decision. Well, for some reason, uh, you decided to follow this link and to listen in. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know why, but but I don't believe that it was by mistake. Whenever you make a decision to explore your purpose and and the power of your uh, decisions uh, and this this life, um, we're making we're making so many decisions. And uh, well, this life isn't a dress rehearsal; it's the real thing. And I, I think it's worth our time to slow down so we can focus in on how we go about making decisions and are our, de- are our decisions in alignment or in harmony with our purpose. We have so much to discuss. So let's, let's go jump right in. All right. So, so, uh, once again, I'm excited that we're on the call today. Um, 
uh, and what we're going to be talking about. Uh, what does it really take to be successful in life and in business? Um, how do we choose what that success should look like for us? And how do we stay on track with the decisions necessary to make it happen? So in harmony. Um, now, now you see, I, I believe you are a child of God. That's just where I'm coming from. I'm not trying to offend anybody. That's where I'm coming from. I believe you're a spiritual being. You have incredible gifts and talents. And, and you're really meant to use and develop those gifts and talents. I don't believe that you're, you're meant to uh, just sit around or put your feet up and take it easy. Uh, we've been given extraordinary privilege compared to all the other animals on the planet. And we, we are designed to make good use of that privilege. Uh, with great privilege, you know this, uh, with great privilege comes great responsibility. In fact, enormous responsibility. And uh, because we're all, we're all responsible for ourselves. And Victor Frankl said, uh, between stimulus and response, there is a gap. And in that gap lies our freedom to choose. And that's, that's where you are. That, that's, that's where I am. Everyone listening to this right now, we're, we're all different. That's what gives us the ability to build a successful business, the ability to choose, to decide, to build a successful life. That's what makes you different from all the other animals on the planet, the gift of free will, the ability to choose. And that starts by understanding how it is that we create. And to create, it really takes two things. It takes order and movement. And you need both. Order without movement is stagnation. And movement without order is chaos. And I'm sure everybody on this line has felt one of those feelings in life. You may be in one of those places right now. You may feel stagnant. Or you may feel in a place of chaos. Well, planning is not the same as achievement, is it? Um, but then activity isn't the same as achievement either. So think about how much order you have in your life. Think about how much movement you have in your life. Where, where does that order come from? Where does that movement come from? Order uh, or, or lack there of it and movement or lack there of it both come from the same place. That place is your decisions your decisions. Yes, everything is easier. If you think about it, what's important to you uh, in advance and, 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 and then make your decisions consistent with what is important to you, the power of a pre-made decision. Everything becomes easier once we have, we have defined the parameters. We have defined, we have discovered, is what I like to say. Our, our true purpose, the power of a pre-made decisions. Decisions are what introduce order into your life. Order comes from deciding what you want in and out of your life experience. Without order, you just run around doing whatever uh, you feel like doing in that moment, and our feelings can betray us. You know that. They can. Our feelings can betray us. Our emotions in the moment can betray us. Well, that, that's the first place where most people trip up is that they're not aware of the decisions that they're making because they, they're not aware that there are other alternatives available to them. They do what they do, thinking everyone, obviously everyone would, would do the same thing in their situation because that's the, the right thing to do, right? It's, it's the only sensible option. But there are always other options. You may just not be aware of those options. And, and we've got to remember, uh, as you know, not deciding is a decision in and of itself. Not deciding is a decision. I remember when I had a moment where I was in indecision, I was caught in indecision. And uh, it was in high school. I'm, um, my mom just heard this story a couple years ago. And you know, when you're a public speaker and you, you put stuff out there all the time on social media, YouTube, your parents kind of learn all your, your secrets. And so I, uh, I shared a story where I went cliff jumping in uh, Sequoia National Park. It wasn't far from my hometown growing up in California. And, and we would drive up and the, the snow melt in the summer, early spring and summer, the snow would melt and there would be this frigid water, but it'd fill 
um, the streams down below and there were these high cliffs that you could jump off into the, the, the streams and little pools that uh, were created from the water flow. And, and we went and it was my first time going to these cliffs and you had to navigate across um, kind of a dangerous spot across a cliff face and then you would get to a spot where you slid down maybe five or six feet onto a platform. Uh, a, a natural made platform that you could jump off of into the water. And I had gotten to that point and I navigated across and slid down. I was on the platform and my friend jumped and then, and he'd been there before and he's like, come on, man, jump. And I'm looking down, I'm looking around. I'm like, and he's like, it's fine, man. And, and, and I'm thinking, you know, you're like a foot shorter than me, man. Uh, so what's fine for you might not be fine for me. And we've all seen those videos. They show them to you in school. You know, don't jump into to places you can't see below. There might be a rock and this, that, and the other. You're going to be paralyzed. And all those thoughts are going through my head. And I was caught in indecision. I was, I was, I was not deciding. But that, that, that decision not to jump was, was a decision to stay where I was at. Now, uh, I was forced into an alternative decision because a bumblebee began swarming around me. And, and, and what uh, you don't know is that just a few years prior, I was stung by a bee and I swole up like a, like a balloon. I didn't have any wrinkles in my ears. So I had this, this very strong allergic reaction to a bee sting just a few years earlier. And that, that bee forced me to make a decision. I could, I could, I could stay up here. I really had three decisions as I saw it. I could, I could stay here and take my chances with the bee, I could try to go back up and navigate across the cliff face, um, backwards, uh, which was, it looked like an impossible decision, or I could just jump. And in that moment, the only sensible decision that I could make was, was to jump. Now I hope that, that I can be the bumblebee in your life right now. And I can push you into deciding, push you into making a decision, push you into thinking about things. Maybe you haven't thought about in a while, or maybe you've never thought about. Because not deciding is a decision. And, and if, you, uh, if you have dug in and you're listening right now and you decide not to move, then you really give over your life to others. And you're only uh, ever a passenger in someone else's dream. You only play a supporting cast role. You're just an extra in someone else's dream. You really give over control of your life and your dream and your calling to someone else. And if, if that is you, if that's the decision that you have made, if you aren't willing to put in the energy, this is a free call. This is a free training. I'm, I'm giving you free resources. If you are unwilling to take the time to work through and define your purpose, then please stop listening now. Go ahead, sign off, do something else, but, but I cannot help you. And you'll only be frustrated as I continue to teach. Okay, let's give a moment. Those who need to sign off, go ahead, sign off. All right, now, now we have the serious people left and we can get into the juicy stuff, right? If you're still on the line, it's because you, like most high achievers, are serious about taking control of your life. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be unclear on your purpose, but it's not okay to stay that way. And that's why you are the type of person that I want to work with because you're still on the line. You might not you might have an unclear purpose. Maybe you haven't made that decision yet but you understand that it's not okay to stay in that place and you want to move forward. One very simple way to make better decisions, uh, and if you're taking notes, I would write this down. If you're not taking notes, I would write this down. <laughs> uh, to make uh, One very simple way to make better decisions and increase our awareness is to get around a different group of people who you can model after people who are getting the results that you want in life. Whenever I talk to people and they say, uh, how should I get a mentor? How should I uh, find a mentor? I say, just find someone that's living your dream and then ask them if you can take them to lunch. Find someone who is successful in the area that you want to be successful in 
and then try to ask them some questions, get around them. Um, people get, get around a group of people though, that, that, uh, you have the same values. They have the same values as you get into, get into a different community. If you want to grow yourself, you want to grow your business, you want to grow your skill sets, get around people that are successful in those, those areas or are pursuing those same, same things. Another option is to study or, or, um, you can research people. You can read biographies autobiographies and understand how people think and how they make decisions. Uh, No matter what you're stuck with, chances are good that the exact problem you're wrestling with has been solved millions of times before by people just like you. So you you need to get around people. You need to get uh, someone who can walk you through that process. You can bounce ideas off of, can be a sounding board of sorts as you process through. Okay. Um, now, you know, as a, as a, as a coach and working with people on their goals and then helping them achieve their goals, there's an important distinction I want to make. And that's between decisions and and following and the following decisions necessary to bring those decisions to fruition. So decisions are often intellectual conclusions after quiet contemplation. I'm going to say that again. Decisions are often intellectual conclusions after quiet contemplation, after much thought. You think about it, uh, you choose what you want uh, your life to look like, and and really before that, uh, I would say you discover your purpose. Before you even kind of work to design anything, you must discover. Discover comes before design. Discover your gifts, discover your talents, discover your abilities. And that, that's part of what the worksheet that I'm uh, providing you with, that's, those are the types of questions that I'm giving to you because you have to, you, you've got to discover what you are good at. So we've got to find out what are your gifts. I believe that everybody is a 10 at something. Some people are really good at speaking. Some people are really, really good at uh, creating. Some people are really good at uh, organizing. Successful people. Uh, I was I was listening to a um, interview with Mark Cuban, and he knew very quickly, instantly, what his his uh, skill sets were, what he was good at, and what he was not good at. He was really good at at seeing a little beyond, seeing around the corner of what's to come with technology, with with business. He can see a little bit further than others, but he always has to partner up with someone who can organize that his that his that's his greatest weakness your greatest strength may be someone else's greatest weakness and you can partner up with them and together you can do fantastic things wow that just that wasn't even part of my notes folks that that was just something that i I, i'm so convinced you've got to define your strengths and people often need, they need help with this. They need someone they can talk to, sounding board. You need uh, self-aware. I don't believe self-awareness is, is really uh, ever uh, comes from, from ourself. It comes from others, right? And others help us become more self-aware. They help us uh, understand uh, what we're good at and what our blind spots are. And so you need other people to help you walk that through like a goals workshop, you know, can help with that or a, 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 a uh, decision making coaching planning, uh, program that you can get into, but any choice is followed by a string of necessary decisions and actions as you live into that choice. And that's where I talk about living in harmony with that pre-made decision. This is not something you can do at a single event because it's life, right? Life happens. You get new information and that new information, uh, helps you make better decisions along the way. This is a living, the process of achieving your decisions, right? If it, if, if it is going to manifest in your life, every step of the way, it's going to be marked by different decisions that need to be made. And those decisions need to be made in harmony with your original decision in harmony with your original decision. And when they are, you feel good. You feel on course, like your life is meaningful and you, you make progress. Every decision made in harmony with that, your initial decision gives you a little bump, a little boop of, of momentum and confidence, a little, a little boop, that, that little, every decision made in alignment, in harmony with our initial decision 
oh, it, it gives you that little, that little boop of energy. And every decision made out of alignment with your overarching purpose, it saps a little bit of your life energy because you are out of alignment with purpose. You're out of alignment with that pre-made decision. Your other than conscious mind is saying, hey, they're, they're, uh, no, this isn't, we're out of alignment. You could even say that you're out of integrity. I remember when I was being interviewed for a leadership position at Costco and I was told one of the questions beforehand, they said, they're going to ask you your definition of integrity. And I mentioned earlier that I, I, I was in construction early on in my 20s and that has always played a role in how I think of things. And in, in construction, you have the integrity of a building, structural integrity is what it's called. And, and that is really the direction I went when I answered this question is I said, hey, if you look around this, this building, this Costco building, there are metal beams in every box building, right? If you've been in a Walmart, you've been in a, a Home Depot, there, there are metal beams or pillars that come down. And those, those, those beams or those pillars, they support the walls, they support the roof. And if those pillars are damaged or if they are out of alignment, then the building is out of integrity and susceptible to structural failure. So every, what's the point? Every decision out of alignment with our purpose erodes the structural integrity of the original decision to pursue our purpose. And if you're wondering, I did get the promotion, so I got the job after that, uh, that definition of integrity. So use it, take it, if you ever asked uh, the definition of integrity. But every decision in alignment with our purpose fortifies the structural integrity of our decision uh, to pursue our purpose. So purpose is not designed. I mentioned this earlier. Purpose is not designed. It is discovered. So I want to ask you, have you taken the time to discover your purpose? If so, have you decided to pursue it? The answer is within. What are the implications of this? Well, let me share with you. And I told you I'd share with you the five pillars of success that I've learned. And I'm going to share those with you in just a moment here because when I'm working with people, I want them to actively write out their goals. That's why I gave you a piece of paper that you can download and I want you to, to write out your goals, your dreams, what it is you want. I want you to take some action. This is the first of the five I, that, that I walk my clients through and I want you to really define that purpose. And, and make some effort to declare what it is that you want. That's why I asked people that weren't interested in doing that to get off the line earlier. Because they're not the type of people that are going to take action. You can't wish it or dream it or think it. You need to write it out. This is why I gave you uh, the first section of the five pillars outline. Along with some bonus questions for you to clarify your purpose. This alone will put you ahead of 70% of Americans. 70% of Americans said they just go to work for the paycheck. So you're telling me you spend at least one third of your life and the bulk of your waking hours doing something that is not in alignment with your purpose or moving you closer to your purpose? That's staggering to me. If you are moving towards your purpose, uh, you, you're going to be a better leader. You're going to be a better team member. If you have a whole team, share this training with them. You're, they're going to be a better employee. They're going to be a better parent, spouse. All of the above because, because they will feel fulfilled. You will feel fulfilled. If you don't know your purpose, you probably feel confused. If you know your purpose and, and you aren't pursuing it, then you are frustrated. And that is to be expected, right? It's okay to be unclear on your purpose, but it's not okay to stay that way. And when we take some kind of action, active commitments, it begins to change who we are. Now we see ourselves as the purpose, the person we are becoming. So let me give you these five pillars uh, before I close today. And, and here they are. Once you, once you have defined the, the five pillars, once you have defined your purpose, purpose is the first fo pillar, you need to surround yourself with the right people. People is the second pillar purpose than people. Once you've surrounded yourself with the right people and you've reached out to them for advice and mentorship, you will be, you will be able to define your main priorities. Priorities are the third pillar. 
Now, once your priorities have been set, we can work on your productivity. What are you producing? What, what is the activity of your life? This is where we dig into the activities that will produce your desired outcome. But once you have determined what activities will get, get you where you want to go, you will need to be connected with the right products or services to help you achieve your desired results. So let me run through these real quick. The five pillars are purpose, people, priorities, productivity, and products. The right services, the right training. If you want to be a doctor, what is the product or service you need to get? It's education, right? We know that. It's simple. If you want to be an engineer, you have to get a different set of products or services. If you don't want to, if you want to be an entrepreneur, there is a different set. If you want to uh, clarify your personal life vision, there's a different service that you need. You need a coach. You need someone to come alongside. You need someone has a strategic plan to help you do that. But I've got to tell you, there's a bonus one. There's a sixth one. Uh, there's a, there's a bonus P what I call it out of these five pillars that, uh, all of the other five pillars are really useless. If you don't have this, the bonus P is, is, is what I call persistence. A success expert Napoleon Hill said, without persistence, you will be defeated even before you start. With persistence, you will win. So that second pillar of people is huge. Do you have the right people around your life? Do they have the right person? And I want you to think into this. And I want, uh, if you need to cut some people from your team, then I want you to give, uh, I want to give you permission right now to do that. How can I give you permission to do this? Well, because every successful mentor I've had in my life has given me permission to do the same thing. I love people and I want to be friends with everyone, but, but there simply is not enough time. And John Maxwell, uh, from, from John Maxwell, one of my mentors to, to my pastor, <laughs> uh, they've all told me stories of how they had to remove people's influence from their life so they could add other people who can help them move towards their highest contribution. Ultimately, the greatest thing any of us could do is to be true to our purpose and pursue it with intense focus. For some of you, the addition you need to make is to start reading books. For others, it'll be to join a group of like-minded people. Um, still for others, it will be to uh, be in a program like mine. Now hear me clearly, I do not want anyone listening to this, this, uh, this right now to reach out to me. I know many of you will go to drewtjackson.com to find out how you can receive one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one coaching with me, but I will not engage in a coaching relationship with anyone who has not first done the worksheet that I've provided for you here and attempted to answer the questions on your purpose. If you are not willing to put in that energy, I've, I've, I've coached enough people to know that it's simply an emotional response. And I told you our emotions will betray us. You'll have an emotional response and I'm not interested in taking people's money. I'm interested in helping them achieve their dream. My stated purpose in life, my own dream is to help you live yours. So, so the reason for that is, is, is that I cannot help you if you are unwilling to help yourself. If you do not have the personal, personal initiative to fill out a two page document, hiring a coach, whether it's me or anybody else, ain't gonna, ain't gonna solve your problems, my friend. But if you like what you heard today and you want to be notified and notified, um, uh, when more content like this comes out, you can, you can sign up for, uh, the resource I have available below called mind shift. And, uh, it's another free resource that, that I want you to take, take advantage of, um, take a few weeks, change your thinking. Um, and, uh, and I'll get that to you. And then you can be notified when I have other, uh, webinars, other, other workshops that I'm doing for free that come out and, uh, and you can have that. I hope you take action. Hope you take action today, my friend, and move towards your purpose, the power of a pre-made decision. I want you to know that I believe in you and my dream is to help you live yours.